H2 comparative advantage lessons would tend to have one belief the trading patterns of countries are clear-cut. China trades in manufacturers while Singapore deals in services. Now, while this may have been fine 50 years ago, but today we are experiencing an increase in intra-industry trade, or IIT. We can actually measure this quantitatively via the Global Lloyd Index, and the data tells us that countries, especially in DCs, are swapping similar or even homogeneous goods with each other, activity that cannot be explained by comparative advantage alone. Of course, part of the reason may be data aggregation. The USA may have a CA in making giant Boeing 747s, while the Singapore economy may have a CA in making integrated circuit boards less of the size of my thumbnail. Both will still end up classified as manufacturers, even though they are distinctly different goods. But even if we account for methodology, over 60% of European trade and 57% of American trade is still IIT. This is a problem for comparative advantage theory. Paul Krugman bagged the Nobel Prize for cracking this code. His theory suggests that IIT can be accounted for with many reasons. The first is differing taste and preferences. Germans may prefer Volvos made in Sweden, while the Swedes may like BMWs made in Germany. So there's IIT and cars between Germany and Sweden. CA, a supply side theory, never considered the demand as aspect of things. Simply put, consumers are fickle and we are willing to pay for variety. The second thing builds on this argument is that, and is that many manufacturers have very large minimum efficient scale, as is the case with aircraft and with cars. The Krugman states that much of such specialization is not rooted in comparative advantage per se, but rather accidents of history. There's no real reason why Volvo should be in Sweden, it just is. The steel in Sweden and the rubber of Sweden doesn't really care if they end up in a Volvo or BMW. Volvo chooses to base itself in Sweden because of purely arbitrary reasons unrelated to comparative advantage. But once Volvo's there, however, the economies of scale generate higher returns on investment and attracts even more investment, which allows for even bigger scale economies and a virtuous cycle that's self-sustaining and, and leads to ever larger profits for Volvo. So in this case, the Swedes may specialize in making Volvos, while the Germany, Germans may specialize in another high MES good, such as BMWs, leading to significant IIT of cars between the Germans and the Swedes. Such trade happens because, remember, we had the different tastes and preferences in both countries. Incidentally, this first mover advantage presents a clear case for strategic trade policy, as we have discussed. 